What up, Fortnite fam? It's Matt back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help make you a better Fortnite player. Today, we're going to talk about peace control and how you can go from being a noob to becoming an absolute legend. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. Because Prodom waits for no one. Peace control turns Fortnite into a battle of wits. Here, you need to be constantly on the move and constantly thinking about how your actions will not only affect the fight right now, but how they can help you claim a victory later on. Depending on the skill levels of the two players engaged in a fight, a battle can be over as quickly as it begins. Other times, players are so evenly matched that the battle will go on much longer. This is why players need to learn peace control, since it will help them create tactical advantages for themselves, but also protect themselves from enemy guns. Gunfire. Against a less experienced opponent, peace control can be a quick way to get rid of other players and increase your elimination score. When engaging in a fight, always keep in mind what you want to do. Do you want to create boxes for safety? Do you want to pop obstacles to slow your opponent down? The more details you have in your head about what you want to accomplish using your builds, the easier it will be to execute your plan later on. But hey, if you need help trying to come up with smarter plays, then all you need to do is click on the link in the description to visit ProGuides.com. There you can connect with a variety of different pro coaches that can help you come up with a smarter game plan. But hey, if you need help trying to come up with some of those smarter plays, then all you need to do is listen to what Clicks has to say next. What's up guys, this is Clicks. I'm super excited to announce the launch of my exclusive two week bootcamp teaching you guys how to master fighting in Fortnite. During the class, we're going to practice, train, and learn together so that you'll be able to think about and play the game the way I do. I'm going to help you completely transform the way you approach fighting and constantly outplay your opponents. If you've been wanting to take Fortnite more seriously, this is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you to connect with me and make it happen. So if you're serious about becoming a better Fortnite player, join me for the next 14 days and commit to improving. Because peace control is well, a control playstyle, its main use will be to limit your opponent's movements while giving you some openings to land a shot and hopefully eliminate them. You also want to make sure that when you're facing off against another player, you take into account how many walls of the box you own. If you are quick with your builds, you can control more of the box than your opponent when they try to box up for their defenses. Make sure to have turbo building turned on since this will help you put down more builds at a time. What many players try to do when they manage to box in an opponent is get ready to place a ramp. A ramp can be useful for giving you an extra path and exit should anything go wrong. However, placing your own cone is actually more beneficial than a ramp. If you own this ramp and you own the walls around you, then your opponent should be backed into a corner where they can't just edit themselves out. The cone will give you slightly more cover during this fight, but also it will allow you to exit upwards if the battle starts going toward the high ground. This kind of multi-purpose build is an example of how peace control can help you control the playing field. One of the things that you should really do to learn peace control is watching the pros. Why? Well, because obviously they are experts at what they do. Start looking up some of your favorite pros and watch their gameplay. You'll notice that they can make some pretty fast plays. In fact, most of the time, you won't be able to really distinguish where one decision starts and what it leads to. However, by slowing down the footage, you get to see every decision they make and how one good edit at the right exact moment can stump their enemies, giving them the opening they need to land the fight ending shot. Take for example, two players headed straight for each other. One player readies his weapon in an attempt to land a few critical headshots. However, the second player anticipates that they intend to fire, so they edit a previously prepped archway into a corner edit. This interrupts the flow of movement, and if you are fast enough, you can jump up and land a blow. You can see moves like these all in slow motion, and when they don't work, you'll also be able to see why they didn't work and how the opponent outsmarted them. Free building is an excellent way to strengthen your building techniques and really just makes it so that you can place the builds faster. 
This is a great way to utilize creative mode and you should make a habit of doing so every so often. In fact, creative mode should be your go-to if you want to learn specific piece control techniques or edits. One suggestion would be to find a move that you really want to learn and start grinding that one move over and over again. While you might be eager to start doing as many moves as possible, it's always best to start at one. Master it and then move on to the next. If you are trying to learn too many edits at once, then your muscle memory won't be able to develop properly. And while you might understand the concept and function of a certain move, you might not be able to pull it off in practice. The easiest way pros train is to find a code for an editing course that they want to try. Plug that into creative and then start training right away. Once you feel comfortable executing the move, you must not forget to do the same thing in Battle Royale. Building and edits are all free when you play creative. However, once you jump into the course, game mode every build is going to cost you and you're then going to start needing to manage your material inventory if you do still want help using your builds and your piece control techniques in a fight without having to jump into a match right away then consider finding someone to 1v1 against this will help you get the core fundamentals down afterwards you might want to try playing some zone wars since this is where the build heavy battles are waged and it's a good way of training your awareness when there are many other players trying to do the exact same thing around you one of the main differences between peace control and box fighting is the radius for where we play. For example, in box fighting, you are either trying to break into a box, defend a box, or fight within the box using limited builds and editing opportunities. However, peace control applies to much more and pretty much encompasses anywhere you decide to fight. This can mean you are fighting inside a building with natural structures surrounding you, or you end up fighting out in the open and most of the structures around you are player made. Always keep an eye out for loose builds. If a box or an entire area of man-made space is dangling from a single wall or ramp, you can use this opportunity to clear the field a bit. Clearing the field is a good technique that can undo the clutter on your screen and make your opponent easier to spot in a build. It'll also allow you to place your own builds quicker. However, keep in mind to have a good perspective of the build you want to knock down. If you destroy the build holding it up, but it doesn't come down, then odds are there is still something else holding it up and that distraction may just have left you open. There is a very easy adjustment that you can make if you want to use your builds to their full potential. This is the wall reset function. This allows you to edit a build and then revert it back to its original state with just a click of a button. Pros have found it quite useful for when they want to fully control the battlefield and even bait their enemies into making critical mistakes. Wall resets take some practice to get used to, so the best option would be to set that keybind as the mouse wheel. This will allow you to have access to it at all times. Wall resets can be used to close a window at any time, revert ramps back into cones, and seal up paths when you don't want your opponent to follow you. Here is an example. You are in the middle of a build battle, and your opponent is coming after you to close the gap. Luckily, you control most of the builds in the area. He manages to land a shot, but with some quick thinking, you are able to open up an archway and seal it back up. This gives you enough time to dig in deeper and hopefully box yourself in. Now you can pop some minis and get your shields back up so you won't go down so easily. Of course, getting your pieces down at the start of a fight and during a fight is not the only thing you need to keep in mind. It is inevitable that your opponent will be able to claim some space for themselves by placing their own builds. So you are going to need to learn how to bring them down properly without just spraying and praying. When your opponent places down a wall, that building space will belong to them. This time you won't be able to build on these spots. So you might need to find a way to bring down the build and then quickly replace it with your own. This might sound simple enough, but it's actually a bit more complex than that. Just like we mentioned before, you can reset walls. Your opponent can do that as well. They also have all their editing powers at their disposal, just like you do. Sometimes you're gonna to want to fire at the wall and try to punch through, while other times you'll smack the wall once or twice to get its health down. However, do be careful and keep a close eye on your opponent. Sometimes you're going to see them pull out their blueprints. And if they do that, it means that they might be getting ready to do an edit. Other times they might keep their distance and edit from afar. So you need to be prepared to anticipate what kind of edit they want to pull on you. Are they going in for a right hand peek? Do they want to attempt a peanut butter edit? Predicting your opponent can be the key to taking your opponent's walls and gaining more ground. However, keep in mind that changing your position is also an option. Moving further away from your opponent might give them a chance to patch up but luring them out of their builds can put you in a better position to take control of the fight. Don't forget to check out Pro Guides after the video and find out how you can improve your Fortnite skills. 
Well, that wraps things up for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy the video? If you did, be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there is anything you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, smart moves and quick plays will win you many matches in the future. So keep practicing your edits and your situational awareness because they will really help you become a master of peace control. Once again, my name's Matt and we will see you in our next video.